I want to talk about how to pick the right epoxy floor coating product because this is a real problem especially if you are new to the field or you want to buy some epoxy as a do-it-yourselfer or you are new and you just get overwhelmed because there's so many different types of products out there and every company claims theirs is the best and they can sometimes be a bit secretive or deceptive what their product is exactly so what I want to talk about is how to pick out the right product and we will focus on the factors that will influence your choice and let me start by saying the word epoxy is thrown around a lot and I feel it's abused I see this a lot in the US by the way where everything is epoxy uh, if someone wants to paint some wood oh let's call it epoxy uh, someone wants to paint a boat it's call it epoxy even though it might not be epoxy it might be polyurethane it might be some other type of polyester resin but in, in the special in the US, epoxy is used just as for everything. But let's be clear, epoxy is not everything. Epoxy is a very certain type of chemical, just like polyurethanes are a certain type of chemicals. So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about some important terms like solid contents. That's an important point to keep in mind when you pick your right product. Water-based or solvent-based epoxy, what do you need? What do you do when it's outside? Do you use the same types of products that you use inside? Well, the answer is no, and I'm going to tell you in a bit. Self-leveling coatings. Those are very different to your classic epoxy paint. What you need to know about that. And finally, I'm going to also mention cementitious coatings, because sometimes we have epoxy or polyurethane-based cements, and people call them epoxy, whereas they are, but they're also something else, very different to your usual coatings. So I'm going to start with number one, the most commonly used and the the one that most people are interested in uh, purchasing and that is epoxy floor paint and i'm emphasizing indoor and the reason why i'm saying indoor is because i'll tell you in a minute but now we're seeing someone here applying this product with a roller so what makes your standard epoxy floor paint well for starters it's a runny product it's been formulated so you can use it with a roller because when you when you use something with a roller you want it to be kind of runny so you can actually spread out on the floor or a squeegee um, it tends to contain some solvents so it's not a hundred percent solid it's not just resins or solids it contains they've been it's been watered down or thinned down with solvents uh, and because it's been thinned down that's why it tends to be lower cost than for example a, uh, a self-leveling epoxy it is also being made for a thin finish and that's why it's runny, because when you have a runny product, it's easier to make a smooth finish. But even though it's smooth, it tends to be lightly textured, and that's because it's not a self-leveling floor. As you can see here, if you look at the reflection in the light of this uh, picture, you can see there's a slight texture to this floor. Now let's go to outdoor floor coatings. This is an example of an outdoor floor coating we did. What is important about outdoor coating is never, ever, ever use epoxy. People say epoxy is good for outdoors. Please do not believe them. Unless they're selling you something else and they're calling it epoxy. If you are going to apply a floor coating outdoors, it should be either aliphatic polyurethane or polyaspartics. They are much more tolerant to UV. I I'm going to post a link to a video where I talk about this more. If you use epoxy, in three months it will be yellow and it will start to chalk. There's no point in putting epoxy outdoors. Always prefer a polyurethane, an aliphatic polyurethane, or a polyaspartic. Next, we're going to go to water-based coatings. In this picture, I am showing someone applying a water-based primer, but the concept is the same. Now, what makes water-based epoxies interesting? Well, for starters, they are less smelly. They don't contain solvents, so they don't have that pungent, that sharp smell, and they are overall better for your health contained uh, compared to, to solvent based coatings we tend to use them on walls a lot because on walls you want a runny product but also a product you don't need the mechanical resistance of a of an epoxy floor um, as i said they contain water instead of solvents. so if you want to water down your product you just add more water you don't add solvents final important point they are breathable Breathable means that if you have underlying moisture, they can kind of bond with that, bond with that moisture and the, any vapors can go through the coating. So that's an, an additional advantage that water-based epoxy has. So if you have areas with moisture, you're, you're better off applying a water-based epoxy. 
Um, if they have one disadvantage is I just feel, especially for floors, they haven't reached the level of mechanical resistance that solvent-based epoxies have. So still, that's why we tend to still see solvent-based epoxies being prepared, being preferred maybe 90% of the time compared to water-based epoxy. But I, I am confident, I've seen so much progress in water-based epoxy that in the few years, I wouldn't be surprised if we have water-based epoxy coatings just as good as solvent-based ones. Um, important point that epoxy chemistry, everything I've talked about here and solvents and, and solids and all these concepts, I cover them extensively in our online course. So check out um, the, our online course because we have an entire module just for that. I'm going to post a link at the bottom below if you want to check out our online course. And this is our online course. And now let's move on to polyurethane coatings. I've talked about polyurethanes in other videos and I'm going to post a link so you can check out some, our, some of our videos on polyurethanes. What makes polyurethanes different in this picture? This is in a freezing chamber and the reason why we like to use polyurethanes in freezing chambers is because they are more elastic. So the number one advantage of polyurethane floors are they're flexible and they're elastic. They tend to be better scratch have a better scratch resistance exactly because they are elastic. They can kind of absorb some of the, the shock. But I would not recommend them for a heavy duty floor. So if you're working on a factory floor with lots of wear and tear, you do not want to be using polyurethanes. And as I said, in the video I'm going to post at the bottom, you can learn more about where you can use them and where you shouldn't use them. And they are a bit more challenging to apply. They are a bit more sensitive to moisture. They tend to cure faster. So these are little things you should keep in mind. In general, I would say that polyurethanes they require a bit more professional experience. So if you are just doing something for the first time, you may want to stick with a standard epoxy based coating. Self-leveling epoxy, the next one. This is a warehouse we completed a few years ago. Um, we've applied a three millimeter epoxy floor here. This is a heavy duty warehouse. It's a logistics center every day. You've got forklifts and pallet trucks going in and out. They are in food distribution. And this is another example of a self-leveling product in a corridor. Look how smooth the finish is. Notice here, if you look at the reflection of the light, how smooth the finish is compared to the other picture I showed before where there was a textured finish. Now, what makes self-leveling epoxy special? It is a thicker product. It has a smooth finish. You, if you buy a self-leveling epoxy, always buy one that's 100% solids. You do not want any solvents in your self-leveling because solvents evaporate and they leave bubbles so always go for a, a smooth finish a 100% a solids product if you are applying a self-leveling epoxy because they are 100% solids uh, they are a bit more expensive compared to your standard epoxy based coating and if you apply it it should be at least 1.5 millimeters in thickness even that is pushing it. I would say go for two to three millimeters. I always apply at least two millimeters with my customers. Um, and we finished self-leveling epoxy. I want to talk a bit about a bit now about epoxy and PU-based cements and polyaspartics. I just want to say that these are only for professionals and for experienced professionals. So if you're just starting out or if you're looking for something please do not go down the road of epoxy and pu based cements they are very hard and tricky to apply you need experienced contractors and they are usually for very specific sort of heavy, hardcore applications so please don't go down that route i am going to post now a few links below uh, remember you can subscribe to this channel i'm also going to post a link where i compare epoxy based floor coatings to self-leveling epoxy Check out our newly online course. As I already mentioned, all these things I covered today are covered extensively in our online course. We have a whole module on the on the epoxy systems and another module on how to pick, uh, uh, how to understand epoxy chemistry. So definitely check out our online course if you want to learn more. Thank you very much for watching and check out these videos. Thank you.